Hello everyone. This time around I want to talk about the UTF-8 character encoding scheme. Now UTF-8 is a Unicode encoding scheme, although it doesn't necessarily have to be used for Unicode. Uh, it can be used to encode any um, scalar value, I think up to 30 bits or so, uh, in a sequence, an un unambiguous sequence of uh, bytes which can range from one to six bytes in length. It's actually quite useful for a number of reasons. One, it's dead easy to decode into its original scalar value. Dead easy. Uh, it, it, you can do it easily on old 8-bit CPUs. Never mind on a modern system which has lots of horsepower. It's real easy to decode. You can even do it with a pencil and paper if you have to. Uh, it also it has the advantage that uh, is pretty easy to encode as well. And it has, uh, because there's six possible uh, uh, structures that you could dump it into, and you can easily handle that. But it also has a couple of other desirable features. One is if you're operating in a byte-oriented medium, you will never have a null byte appear in the encoding unless the null itself is what is being encoded. And that is very desirable because there are communication media where null bytes will just get eaten, they just disappear, although most of those aren't used anymore. And there are a lot of systems that expect null terminated strings. So if you send, say, UTF-16 or UTF-32 in there with their uh, null paddings, you, you'll break them because there will be null bytes. It'll take that as the end of the string. So you have that. You also have the fact that you can jump into the middle of the stream of bytes, whether because you're recovering damaged files or because you're trying to seek around in there or something like that. And you can always find the start of the character you landed on. There are only uh, three possibilities. One, you landed on a single byte character, in which case you know that, a, si a single byte encoding. Two, you landed on the start of a multibyte encoding, so you know, and you'll know that. Or three, you landed in the middle of a multibyte encoding, in which case you can back up until you find the start of it, or you can move forward till you find the start of the next character. UTF-8 is unambiguous. It also has a further, very significant advantage. It has no byte ordering issues. Because it's defined as a sequence of bytes, there can be no byte ordering issues. Uh, if you're using 16-bit or 32-bit values, you do have byte ordering issues. Different systems will order the bytes in different orders, potentially. And two systems trying to deal with each other will have to figure that out. And that is obviously a problem. Unicode tries to solve that with a thing called the byte order mark, uh, which uh, is a great idea. It allows you to identify byte swapped uh, uh, value or text. And, uh, you know, if you mark your, the start of your text with a byte order mark, uh, then it's pretty, then it could be a pretty good indicator that it's in uh, Unicode as well. But if you use UTF-8 encoding, you don't even have to worry about byte ordering issues because the text is processed byte by byte just like it always has been. And as a result, you know, if, if your system is little endian, once it's decoded the bytes, it's got a little endian value. If your system is big endian, once it's decoded the bytes, it's got a big endian value, so it can just operate on them. It doesn't have to swap swap bytes around or anything like that to uh, normalize anything. And then, uh, similarly, when it's encoding, it uh, builds up the encoding from its native endianness into a sequence of bytes. That's unambiguous. And that's actually probably the biggest 
uh, feature going for UTF-8. And that might be one of the biggest reasons why it has become so popular. Uh, other than the fact that English text doesn't tend to get any bigger when you convert it from ASCII to, uh, to UTF-8 because the lower 128 code points, which correspond exactly to US ASCII, uh, they don't get any bigger. They're represented as themselves. And that has some advantages for uh, other things as well, such as communication protocols and so on. So it's actually kind of useful to uh, have that encoding that way. It also means that legacy things that are expecting U.S. ASCII but can ignore um, characters with the high bit set, then the UTF-8 will go through such a system without being molested and come back out the other side intact. So it's generally a quite a, uh, a good system, especially for interchanging documents. And it's also a really good system for long-term encoding, because if you do end up a bit rot, you can still identify the remaining characters that are left when you uh, take apart your file, uh, your recovered files. Uh, and it also means that uh, you don't have to worry about what endianness it was stored in or anything like that. Now, there are reasons you might not want to use it, uh, particularly if your language uses characters all near the high end of the uh, uh, Unicode encoding, then your, uh, your sequences are going to be, uh, uh, you know, approaching 32 bits, you know, four bytes long. And if the Unicode uh, standard uh, uh, comes along with additional uh, code points above that, well then, you know, while those would fit into the single, a, th a single 32-bit uh, value, you'll end up with five and six byte encodings potentially in the UTF-8. Now the uh, stuff at the high end, uh, that stuff would be encoded with surrogate pairs in the 16-bit encoding world, uh, which is, will make it 32 bits anyway. So the stuff at the high end, it doesn't lose by using UTF-8. The stuff at the low end wins by using UTF-8, and the stuff in the middle, some of it's the same length, you know, two bytes. Some of it's three bytes when it would be two, but it's not that big of a, a problem when a lot of stuff would potentially be using the 32-bit scalar value inside it for its own internal processing anyway. So UTF-8 is excellent uh, for a lot of reasons. It was actually quite well thought out. Uh, I quite like the encoding myself, and I've, uh, I've made sure that uh, pretty much anything that I build uh, today, uh, or even in the past 10 years, has specified that it's using the UTF-8 encoding to make sure that uh, any data, that get, any strings, text that gets put in there is encoded properly so that uh, the next time uh, the system's updated or something like that, the, uh, the data is intact and we don't have character set issues for moving things forward to a new platform. So we don't have to actually convert the character sets. Uh, and that's uh, actually worth quite a lot all on its own. If everything's using UTF-8, you're storing your data in databases in UTF-8, you're storing your text and files in UTF-8, your system itself is configured in a UTF-8 locale, it means you'll have basic general compatibility with everything everywhere. And if everybody on the planet were using a UTF-8 based locale, then it wouldn't matter what uh, that I sent you a bare text file. Uh, I, I write it on my system with a UTF-8 encoding. I send it to you. You open it on your system which, with a UTF-8 encoding and you see exactly what I wrote. You see the same text that I wrote come out on your system even if I'm in Canada and you're in Japan. And that is quite useful. It also means that if I happen to want to read something written in Japanese, if I actually could read Japanese, which I can't, but if I could, then I can get a text file that's written in Japanese and go to UTF-8, say from Project Gutenberg, um, and 
then I can read it on my system. Even though my system is set up for English, it's also set up for UTF-8. Now, of course, that all assumes I have the font that can display the stuff and that my system understands how to display the particular text that it's got. And, th and that's a problem that's, uh, that Unicode itself is largely concerned with, uh, and, you know, well beyond just the uh, character code point assignments. It also specifies properties of characters and rendering algorithms and so on. And that's quite complicated to actually be compliant. Uh, and that's unavoidable because writing systems are complicated. But that's beyond the uh, scope of, uh, of this uh, ramble here. Basically, uh, UTF-8, you don't lose anything by using it as your character set if you're using English. Uh, there, there's no, no downside to using UTF-8 if you're using English. Because if you're using English, you're almost certainly using ASCII encoding. And that's going to be unchanged when you convert it from ASCII to UTF-8. Uh, so your text doesn't change. As a matter of fact, your plain old ASCII text is compliant UTF-8. And as a result, most of the English world can just dump their English text into a, a, a UTF-8 system, unmodified, bang, it's compliant. So there's really no excuse for the English-speaking world, the programmers in the English-speaking world, to be doing anything other than UTF-8. And this has the advantage. If somebody wants to use diacritical marks on some of the, the uh, words, and in English some words are properly spelled with diacritical marks, otherwise known as accents, um, words like naive, uh, it, those words really should have their diacriticals on them uh, if somebody wants to write their stuff with those and everything's using UTF-8, bang, everything works. And if somebody... Now, here's an even better reason. Somebody comes along and their name is French and it has accents on it or something like that. Uh, well, now they can put their name in the system properly. Or somebody comes in and they want their display name to be the uh, how they write their name in Japan in the kanji characters. Well, now they can do that. And even if you can't read their name, presumably if they're writing their name that way, they're dealing with other people that are also uh, fluent with that writing system. So if you're building something like a social network site or a forum where people can communicate in whatever language and you're not enforcing English usage, there's no reason to disallow other characters outside of the English alphabet. So if you're using UTF-8, even if you are disallowing that stuff now, you're future-proofing things so if you do decide to turn it on later, it will just work, or mostly just work. And that is a significant advantage as well. It gives you expandability in the future, and it gives you, well, there's really no downside, because not only is plain old US ASCII compliant with UTF-8, so if you, that's all you've got in your old stuff, you can just say, this is UTF-8 and be done with it. But things like uh, the database servers, like MySQL and so on, support UTF-8 out of the box. So you don't even have to worry about that. Uh, Linux servers, um, desktop machines, Windows even, I think, they all support UTF-8. Web browsers support UTF-8. So if everything supports UTF-8, and there's really no downside to using it. Why not use it? And that's really what it comes down to. So to everybody out there who's building applications, whether they're web applications or, or for uh, desktop machines or whatever, are you using UTF-8? If not, 
Why not? Anyway, that's my ramble on this uh, subject for, for now. Uh, it's actually a pretty big topic. I may come back and do some rambling on other aspects of it. But for now, this is all. And if uh, you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe. If you've watched this far, thanks for watching.